Hi, this week I came across a video from Brian Denlinger called Beware of Religious Atheists. Let's see what he has to say. Beware of religious atheists. Hmm. You say there is no such thing as a religious atheist. Oh, actually, yes, there is. Religious atheists? Psalm 14, verse 1, down through 3. Get that in one hand. Yay, Psalm 14. The one where Christians say God calls atheists fools because they say there is no God. Atheists out there freaking out. We don't believe the Bible. We don't believe the Bible. B -I -D -L -E. Yeah, yes, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's so fun to deal with atheists. We don't believe in your book of fairy tales. Uh, okay, um, well, just get one of these Bibles and look up some things just to, to see if I'm telling you the truth or not. Don't have to believe what you're reading, but just check and see, is this preacher actually telling me the truth? The truth? Great. I'm all for that. You know, it's, it's not going to bite you, right? Look out. Oh, it's a Bible. Oh, look out. Poor atheists. Ah, uh, the Bible. In a world filled with books about gods written by people, one is more horrifying than all the others. The Bible. Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3. Here is secular atheists. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. Remember that. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside, and they are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. That's why he had to die on the cross to pay for your sins, because you're too rotten to, to be a good enough person to make it to heaven. And so am I. All right. But the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. If you're talking about people who believe in God and live their lives disregarding God, then you're talking about practical atheists, not atheists in the strict sense. OK, let's take a look at Psalm 14 and see what biblical scholars have to say. Willem van Gemmeren says the word fool, as used here, means someone who is neither ignorant or an atheist, but instead refers to someone who is corrupt and morally wicked. John Phillips agrees. Stuart Irvine and Roy Harrisville say the phrase, there is no God, applies to practical atheism. Practical atheism does not reject or accept claims about God, whereas atheism is generally seen to be a lack of belief in gods. Walter Brueggemann suggests Psalm 14 is more of a teaching directly related to the people of Israel at the time, and this is confirmed by Robert Davidson and Arthur Weiser, with Weiser saying, The threat made by God in verse 7 is directed to the people of Israel, the morally corrupt fools mentioned in the first verses, who took advantage of others for the sake of their own selfish ends. Ultimately, Psalm 14 doesn't refer to secular atheism, but to those in Israel who turned away from God in practical atheism and impoverished the poor. So far, you haven't spoken the truth, Brian, so what else have you got? Keep your hand there and go to Titus chapter 1, verse 16. They profess that they know God. Um, who are the people that profess that they know God? Not believe in a God, or I think that there could be a... No, no, no. They, they profess that they know God. People in religion. That's who it is. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Being abominable. Hmm. And disobedient, and unto every good work, reprobate. Religious atheists. This verse forms part of a letter written by the Apostle Paul and given to Titus, giving him directions to bring Yahweh back to the people of Crete who were liars, evil brutes, and lazy gluttons. How do we know this? The Bible says so. George Whelan says, Verse 16 is not about atheists, but Jewish teachers and professors on Crete at that time. And Kevin Gary Smith mentions the Greeks who believed Zeus was entombed on the island and therefore claimed to know God. So we're back to practical atheists. 
But here's the important detail. K.J. Van Hooser says, Hall's letter is specific only to Crete in the first century and shouldn't be appropriated for our times. Philip Towner agrees. So, this verse does not relate to modern times and also refers to practical atheists and not secular atheists. You say, well, I just don't want to... Give me a couple of examples. How about the Catholic pervert priests that rape children? I said, well, that's, that's organized religion for you. Uh, no, that's religious atheism for you. Um, would those priests be raping those children if they really believed that they were going to stand before a holy, righteous God that saw everything that they did and judged them for it? No, they wouldn't. Um, would they really rape children if they understood that there is an eternal hell burning down there? One day going to become a lake of fire, I understand, but would they believe that? Or would they do, would they, excuse me, would they do the things, raping children and things, if they believed in eternal hell? No, they wouldn't. What about these Christian perverts and Bible believers who've been convicted of multiple charges of sexual assault on children? The only people that you can truly trust are those of us Christians, born again Christians like myself, and there's others out there, but those of us that actually believe this book and try our best to live by this book. We're the ones that you can trust. Who can you trust in these scary times? You can trust born-again Christians. Like Milwaukee monster Jeffrey Dahmer and son of Sam David Berkowitz. Born-again Christians. Better than everyone else. All the other religious people out there are atheists. That's all. And um, you don't judge them by their profession either. Uh, see, that's a, that's a real... Uh, tough nut to crack for some of these people out there that say all it is is just your belief, it's just your profession. You say you're a Christian, well, you're in. Uh, that's not what the text says. Those people profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. You judge a Christian by the fruit that they bear. You judge them by their works. Did their life change? If there's some kind of a crooked, wicked devil that does evil things, that, that uh, if God exists, that, you know, and they're going to be judged by that, they wouldn't possibly be doing those things. Well, then you're dealing with a false convert, you see. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, be careful of religious atheists. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, they say atheism is just a small percentage of the people. Well, secular atheism, I mean, you have to be a real fool to believe that everything came from nothing accidentally at some unknown time in the past. Do you mean fool within the context of the verse you read? Meaning someone who is morally wicked and not someone lacking in intellect? Well, secular atheism, I mean, you have to be a real fool to believe that everything came from nothing accidentally at some unknown time in the past. Around 13.7 billion years ago. And you're nothing more than an animal with no purpose in life. I mean, boy, happy times are here again, you know. Um, I mean, uh, that's, that's a small minority. But the truth of the matter is, religious atheism is the majority of people. Um, Muslims and, and, and Catholics and things like that, the two biggest uh, religious atheist cults in the, in the world, um, they're filled with people that profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. And they're abominable. Wow, that's a big call, Brian. Coming from someone who doesn't understand the very book from which they read, without the slightest acknowledgement of those who have done equally detestable things within your religion. And Christians call atheists hypocrites. That's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and please take care. Until next time.